Hello and welcome to the MechSoft demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mechsoft.com. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Now, I'm going to switch over to our plugin for Rhino and show you how we can make your workflow much more simpler and your selection process a lot easier by detecting whole features when you have a part that has several features that needs to be machined. Now, typically for programming a part like this, by manually selecting the holes, you'd have to go through the process of hole machining, drilling, and you had to go through and pick each of these holes from the geometry. So this would be a time-consuming process when you have a part that contains multiple holes or multiple pockets that needs to be selected and programmed. Now with the hole feature detection and machining, this simplifies your entire workflow where you can use a single button poke to identify all the features and then program these operations from the features that you identified. So the workflow is very similar. Uh, uh, have you noticed in Visual CAD CAM, the workflow is similar in Rhino CAM as well. So you go over to the Machining Objects browser and then click on the Features tab and you would want to go ahead and click on Create Machining Features and now you select the face and right click or press Enter to accept your selections. So in this process, the features are being identified and once they've identified, they're automatically displayed under the Features tab in your Machining Objects browser. So you'll now notice that there is a planar face. We have prismatic pockets. You can see that there's four pockets that have been detected and identified. And we have hole features. We have several hole features as you see it. So each of these whole features are automatically grouped based on the feature whole. So they could be different in diameter, you could have a counter bore. So each of these whole features are grouped and you'll see that there's number of instances. You can see there's total of 16 instances for whole feature one. And as you select these instances, the corresponding features are highlighted on the part itself. Now as this part is a prismatic and uh, the features can be identified and machined from a single orientation, from one orientation, I don't need to go through the process of identifying the whole features from the bottom because there aren't any features that would require us to be machining from the bottom side. But once you have these features uh, detected and identified, we could program the tool paths and it's gonna be a lot easier, quicker process to program it. So again, we'll select the uh, features tab. So I have a planar face, I could add a, a facing operation for it. So before I create a facing operation, I'm just gonna insert a stock. I'm gonna use a part box stock in here, specify an offset of 100 thousandths. So I would like to face the top of the part. Right click on the planar face, and now you can see that when you select the planar face and right click, you can either program a facing pocketing, roughing, or a profiling operation. So in this particular step, I would like to use facing. So I'm going to use facing. The feature is automatically selected. And if you'd like to drop any of the features, you can select it and say remove active. So feature automatically gets added or dropped. You can also add additional features by clicking on select features to add additional features for this operation. The next step, we'll make a selection for the tool. In this case, I'm going to use a three quarter inch end mill and establish all the additional parameters and then generate creates the tool path for the planar face. So we now have a facing operation that's programmed. Now let's go ahead and program these prismatic pockets in here. So select prismatic pockets, right click and I'm going to choose pocketing and I'll go with a half an inch end mill and select generate. So we now have toolpath that's programmed for the prismatic pockets in here. The next step is to program these holes. We have holes of different sizes. Now I would like to do a spot drill for all of these holes so I can right click on the hole feature and choose drilling and you'll notice that each of the hole features is displayed and as you select 
the whole features under the features tab in here, you'll see that the whole cross section for each of the whole features have been identified and also displays the diameter and the depth of each of the holes that have been identified in here. You can see that the whole diameter ranges from an eighth inch all the way up to half an inch. So for all of these whole features, I would like to program a spot drill operation. So I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. And rather than uh, drilling to the total depth, I can override the depth in here. And I could say I only want to go down 50 thousandths. And in addition to that, I can apply a sorting and generate it. So we now have a drilling, a facing, pocketing, and a spot drill operation created in here for this whole feature. Now I can go to the simulate tab, select the setup, and then click play to run the verification. Folks, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to post those questions in your questions panel, and we'll try to get those questions answered in for you. So as you can tell by looking at the simulation, you have the facing, the pocketing, as well as the spot drill operation. Now we could go back into the features tab to create additional operations in here. So I could right click on a whole feature and add additional operations in here. So in this particular step, I'm gonna do a drill. And I can use the same tool in here, the eighth inch tool, drill bit, and then drill it to the total depth. I can change my tool to a drill bit and use add tool tip to drill depth and pick generate. So the drilling operation is now generated. Similarly, I can go back and add additional tool pads for each of these whole features. Now, rather than having to go through the process of manually having to pick each of these whole features from the part, this identifying the whole feature and programming it saves you a significant amount of time in generating your tool pad. So this is a big time saver, which means it improves, increases your productivity rather than having to go through the process of manually programming each of these holes.